Hello everybody, I'm on the Havila Castor, the newest ship of the Havila Cruise Lines, together with Captain Björn Ivar Pedersen. And we will talk about leadership, about human factors aspects, about challenges in being a captain and working together with a crew. We try to find similarities um, of an aviation, of an airline captain as I am, and of a ship's captain as uh, Björn is. And I'm sure it will be a very interesting uh, time to find out what we have in common and maybe where the differences in our work is. Björn, yes. you created almost an emergency this morning. When I was on the deck, you blew your horn and it's terribly loud and it was so surprising I even almost fell down to the water. And that is not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, do. we did the party past the Arctic Circle this morning. And then we have a tradition that we blow the horn to, to, um, uh, yeah, to let people know that we are uh, entering the, the Arctic waters. And uh, of course, this is a special occasion for a lot of uh, people that is traveling, of course. It's high north and uh, we have a competition where people uh, guess time that we are passing. And uh, the prize is the flag that was up when we passed the circle, signed by me with time and date and this thing. And it's, uh, it's really good. It's funny and uh, some people guess very accurate, uh, so uh, yeah, that is a tradition we have. Yeah. And we also do this in ports between 8 in the morning and 8 in the evening. We blow the whistle. You know, this is from the old uh, days when the uh, coastal steamer was, was uh, started. There was um, a northbound signal and a southbound signal. And this was uh, due, there was no phone, there was no, uh, yeah, communication was not so good. So you know when the, you hear one long blast, one short and one long last, you know it was the North Goal Coaster steamer that was coming to port. Yeah. Okay. So this was the signal, so the people around should know that the coastal steamer was, was uh, coming to port. Mm -hmm. Because you shall not go so many years back, because this was the lifeline along the coast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get the post, to get people and everything, it was, yeah. it was uh, a, a really big uh, way of, of uh, transporting. Well, it, it was before the planes and the buses and these things, so the seaway was... Yeah the way to get from the north to the south. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it seems still to be very important. I mean, you have today, you have still the postal service on the ships and you also have the tourists like us. Yeah, we don't have the, the, the post, that is, uh, the, we have stopped with that, but we have uh, goods. We have, uh, yeah, here we can uh, carry 200 pallets mm -hmm. of goods, mm -hmm. uh, 40 pallets of frozen if you need and, and 40 of cooling and, and otherwise uh, ordinary uh, goods. And this is really important for the, for the coast. And mm -hmm. you know, as we are 11 ship training this route, so there is uh, uh, goods going all the way. Yeah. We saw that especially in the pandemic, how important it was, especially up in the north, in Finnmark, yeah. where we were more or less the only, uh, only transporter on the coast to get, okay. uh, to get uh, food and fruits and everything for the community up in Finnmark. And you know, the fishermen went outside fishing we carry the fish from uh, Finnmark and to Lofoten for, either, for further processing. Yeah. So that was, uh, even though it's, uh, uh, things have changed, so we saw when, when, we, when we, we were highly needed in the pandemic. Yeah. So therefore, everything was shut down, mm -hmm. but the government needed to uh, let two of the ships go from uh, Bode to Kirkenes to ensure the, the provision of the people up in the north. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So it seems so even, important, eh? Yeah, it is really mm -hmm. important. And um, I think everyone that lives from, from Bergen to Greece, they have a very strong heart for this. You mm -hmm. know? I remember as a kid, back in Stockmarkness, where this was founded, we were only, uh, oh, uh, when we were kids, when we knew the uh, the Kyrsrutten arrived, we traveled down to the quay and looked at the ships, you know, <laughs> every day. And this was normal. Yeah. So we are, uh, this is, uh, we are grown up with this. Yeah. It's, it's by heart, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I wish I would have a, a whistle, you call it, uh, on my plane yeah. as well, but <laughs> nobody will hear it in 10,000 meters. No, it will not, it, yeah. Hey. No, but that is an important part of it. That yeah. is a part of our identity, of course. Mm -hmm. so we are, we, uh, this is a tradition we will, mm -hmm. we will keep further on. Yeah. So the ship has a length of around more than 120 meters. You have a crew of uh, around 70 persons at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, what are the challenges you face as a captain? Yeah, that the challenges can be, of course, be uh, be uh, be uh, uh, different. But uh, my main task as a captain is to make ensure of the safe uh, operation of the ship. Yeah, 
And then I have uh, department leaders. You know, I have one hotel manager in charge of the hotel, uh, one uh, chief officer in charge of the deck crew, and one uh, chief engineer in charge of the of the engine department. So of course I do. Uh, I, I have a, a really uh, a good communication with this department leaders. You know, notice for breakfast, we always eat breakfast together, mm -hmm. discuss the day. Do we have any challenges? Do we have anything that... So it's a part of the... And then we do for, for breakfast and lunch, we have this, these meetings. And, uh, and uh, of course, I'm around the ship uh, talking to the crew and, and make sure that, uh, yeah, we have an open door policy here. Uh, so I'm available at all time for crew, whatever the needs should be, actually. It's very interesting. I just bought a book yesterday about the Norwegian culture. Yeah. It seems to be a funny book, but it has, I guess, a lot of uh, truth in it. Yeah. And uh, it is said it's like a, a very equal um, society. And in this, I mean, you talk about uh, the morning and, and the lunch yeah. meetings you have with your crew to, to be approachable, to, to do... I would compare it to a briefing. We do pre-flights. The, before we go on a flight, we do a briefing, mm. which starts about one and a half hours before the flight. The crew gathers together and we talk about uh, important things, about special passengers, the weather situation, of course. We do a pre-flight planning. And we also talk about a kind of an emergency situation that we could imagine how we would handle it. Yeah. So to assure a good communication, we have a lot of procedures. Mm. Do you have Standard yeah, procedures. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have standard procedures, though. But uh, um, you know, as we are here divided in, in in three groups, you can say. So of course, the hotel department they have this morning meeting discussing the day of, of their task. Mm -hmm. uh, the chief officer has morning meeting with the bosun to discuss their tasks for the day, and and the chief engineer as well to plan the day with uh, the first engineer. Now. So we are doing this uh, every day, you know, but in, in different departments. I cannot be involved in all of this. So, so I get my information from the head of departments. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But so could be anybody in the crew, when you are at the table, could approach you and say, um, Björn, I have a question or I have a remark? Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And they do. That's cool. Yeah, that's, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. So not, so not a high hierarchy. Um, no, no, no. I, I wouldn't say so. But of course, we are. We need some. Uh, we mm -hmm. need. It's, it's needed, of course. But I guess all of us uh, here uh, see the importance of being uh, approachable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is what is the biggest advantage for you being approachable? Yeah, the biggest advantage for me is is uh, is that I, uh, if there is anything wrong, if something is going on, that. Uh, I get to know about it because the captains are the, uh, normally the last one to know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, and I want to be uh, not the first, but I want to know uh, as soon as possible if, if something is, it can be whatever it is. So that is the best part of being approachable. Yeah. And I also have, uh, of course, uh, uh, the communication with the crew. That's mm -hmm. important for me as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I think uh, being approachable is, uh, yeah, it's very important. We call and it I know my, all my colleagues are, are, are more the same. It has been a culture like this in this, uh, this uh, two student for, for as long as I can remember. Hey, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I remember days when I started more than 30 years ago as a first officer, yeah. uh, a young pilot. Uh, it was not the same culture as we have it today. No, no. Today we're talking about a, a speak up culture. It is important for us yeah. to be approachable. Because, uh, as you say, I think it's important that I, as the captain, I'm not last to know, but everybody else knows already. Because yeah. if I don't know, I cannot take any action. No. It seems to me like in the earlier days there were um, fears. Maybe CEOs fear if their people start to think with them mm. uh, or have the feeling of losing control. But I think it's not the case. I am the captain, I have the last decision, you as well. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I have no fear of no. people bringing up their ideas, their thoughts. No, I am totally agree with you because uh, we are uh, 70, around 70 in crew, you know, we work as a team. Yeah. I, I, um, I need, uh, um, if things are going to, to, uh, to go smooth, and we need to have everything go, we need to have the, um, cabins cleaned, you know, you need to have the food served, you need to have the reception. So in this big wheel, everyone has an important role. Yeah. So that is, uh, 
we have to work together. We have to find the best solutions together due to the working environment and of course to do the best service for our guests that is on board that have planned this for a long time. It's a time of their life going with the coastal steam and it's very important for us that we that we make the best product that is possible for us, for our guests. <laughs> and this is by being approachable. Uh, I think we'll have a good environment mm -hmm. indeed with being approachable. <laughs> So still, still interesting. You tell me you are approachable, and I believe you, really. But when you, as the captain, walk through the ship, I think, oh, this is the captain. May I talk to him? Um, it's interesting. My feeling in the culture is still, this is the captain of the ship. Mm. He's maybe not approachable to me as a, as a passenger, mm. but you would be, I guess. Yes, I am. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, I noticed that from, from time to time that uh, the, meet people in the hallway and say hi you know it's oh shit that was the captain <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. it's like when i go to f when we have yeah. we have first class business class and, and yeah. uh, the economy class and i'm special passengers i go and greet them yeah. because we have many uh, loyal customers yeah. and also the first class passengers yeah. love to be greeted by the captain yeah. and so we do it whenever we have time mm. i see when when I, I pass through the corridors you know or wherever i am just stop and say hi you know journey nice and these things that it's not so much that uh, that you have to do to to, yeah, exactly. uh, to, to to make a good day for the for the guests yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they feel like um, like you notice yeah. them and I guess this is important yeah that is important yeah. Yeah. the good thing is is to try to relate to yourself when you are on holiday you know? yeah, what exactly. do you expect from the uh, yeah. from the other part yeah. Yeah. so if you start there I think this is a good start for how, how you should behave yeah. As, an, uh, yeah, as a leader now we go, my question would be, the next one is like education. How, how many years does it need to become a captain of a ship like this? How many years of experience? Yeah, it's, it's of course individual, but uh, I would say yeah, around 10 years. Mm -hmm. that I think that is more or less a minimum of 10 years. Yeah. But you know, in this, uh, in this uh, just route, uh, it has been for 130 years, you know, we are celebrating this year, uh, 130. And up till a few years ago, this was uh, no one changed jobs. When they start in the in the Houston, they was there the whole life, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was normal these days. Yeah, the captains, no one, th there was no rotation, you know, because no one quits. <laughs> yeah. People stay yeah. here. But the latest started to change around, yeah, 2012, uh, 10 around. Then we, then we have a change because the offshore market was growing, and mm -hmm. there was. So, so we have some rotation around mm -hmm. the, the, the... Usually we have around 12 years mm. before, that's an average, to become a captain. Yeah. And I think uh, that's good, say, I guess, yeah, for, yeah. For, for to have the, the education, oh, yeah, to, yeah. to experience yeah. um, challenging, difficult yeah. situations as well, and to handle them, and but to learn uh, from the captain. Yeah. When you're still... But when I say 10 years, it's from you get your license yeah. to you get the captain. And then you have an education program for two, four, six, seven years. So you can say 17 to 20 years before you are a captain. Ah, okay, 17 to yeah. 20 years. With the, with the education. When you ah, say 10 okay. to 12, that's from you yeah. get finished from school and get your license and start sailing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there's like um, a seafarer school, yeah. and then you go on the ship and yeah. you learn from your fellow colleagues. Yes. So what, how do you educate your first and second officers? Yeah, we, uh, of course, we, uh, 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 when people come new to us, you know, we have a training program, of course. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so we... Uh, uh, before you can enter a position, you have to go through a, a training program that we are. Yeah. And then they start sailing with us. They start at navigational officers with the chief officers. Mm -hmm. And the chief officer is, uh, is uh, getting him knowledge to the, to the, to the navigational officer. So when we sail, we talk about uh, uh, which uh, heading we should have, which distance from shore, the lighthouses and all these things. And this is, is a, 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 it's, it's where we start. Mm -hmm. We also start very early to get the crew to uh, maneuver the ship, yeah. uh, because it's important that everyone can uh, maneuver uh, mm -hmm. the ship. And I usually say so, if everyone is better than me than to maneuver, then I have a perfect life. Huh. <laughs> so we train that all the time. Rune here, he is driving a ship like it's, uh, he has never done anything else, and of course, so we are we are training, and of course, as the the, the skills get better, they can uh, they can try in, in weather wise. You know, we have a lot of challenges in the winter time with the bad weather winds and these things. So, so it can be a challenging maneuver. So we train them all the way to to get to the to the next level. 
So like a step by step. Yeah, yeah. I find it very interesting when you say you are lucky, the luckiest captain even, if somebody is in a, maybe in some points better than you. Yeah, of course. For me it's the same because yeah. then I know I can trust yeah. in their um, capabilities, yeah. their knowledge, their skills. Yeah. And it's cool for me because it's relaxing. I have good people, but when I look out in, in companies, um, in other sectors, um, could be also the industry on, on shore. Some bosses, uh, some managers really fear it, having people yeah. better than themselves yeah. below in the hierarchy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from the old times, uh, knowledge was power, you know. Yeah, yeah it, but, was, it was. Uh, but society has changed a lot. And, and to be a captain now, or as short as 20, 30 years ago, it's a big, big difference. Mm -hmm. Because, because uh, people have changed, society has changed. You have to handle people otherwise than you did for, for 30 years ago. Yeah. So, so uh, you need to be a part of the... Uh, <laughs> of the crew? Yeah, a part of the crew, but, but as a captain, you need to understand that, uh, that things have changed. You know? and this is very similar to what you told me to, before now to, to my job as well. Yeah. Now, leadership. What is your leadership style? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I want to be a clear leader. I want to be an approachable leader and I want to be an including leader. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that is, is fixed together. Yeah. So, and, uh, and as a leader, I want the best out of my people. Uh, I want to do the job. Uh, I want to, that they have the most interesting uh, experience at work. I want them to feel that we see them that we are uh, feeding them with, uh, yeah, with uh, inputs and, and knowledge to get, the, to get better in their jobs, you know. And how do we do that? Well, for the first, I have I be myself. That is the, 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 that is the first and most Being authentic, door. you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, as I say, open door. I talk to everyone. Yeah. I, I can, uh, if I'm downstairs, if I eat with, uh, with the ABs or the apprentice or the officers, that does it doesn't matter for me. Yeah, the food tastes the same and, and I have a good talk with, with everyone. Yeah. I love your words yeah. and I guess this is when we first met I had the feeling that there is a match between our leadership style because what you say is it could be the same like I would um, maybe find the words um, describing a good leadership style but I know it's depending on the situation and sometimes it's a very clear autocratic leadership mm. maybe if we are in an abnormal or emergency situation, if I don't have time to ask everybody for their opinion first. And if I have time, I try to include the persons mm. to think with me, to bring up options, solutions. Yeah. And then at the end, I choose the right solution. Yeah. And uh, then we execute this and hope uh, that we have chosen the right one. Yeah, I used to say it's a time for everything. It's a time for joy. It's a time for uh, serious interest. And and there I also say that you have to be a clear leader as well, you know, that, yeah. is, that is important, but you should not be so clear leader that you push everyone away, then, then, you, have, then you have made it the wrong, you know, you have to be a, uh, but as you say, when we have situations, uh, then you have to be uh, straightforward and, yeah. and take the decisions, and of course, on behalf of the feedback you get, someone you have, sometimes you have uh, time to get the feedback, sometimes you don't, that is our role as a captain's, mm -hmm. uh, we have to do the decisions mm -hmm. there and then. So. Exactly. And of course, we have to make sure that uh, we also we have to try to get uh, most information that we can to get the right decisions. Yeah. Yeah. So it's teamwork uh, all the way. Yeah. Yeah. It is. You yeah. talked about feedback. Um, when I get the Norwegian culture right, it means if I don't get any feedback, I did my work well enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. How do you handle it? I mean, let's say I would be your first officer on the deck and we go into a port and my maneuver was not perfect. Will there be a debriefing? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> it will indeed, yeah, th that all the time. And that is a part of going forward. Mm -hmm. I have to transfer my skills to Rune, you know, it's yeah. sailing for a moment. And, and uh, when we are starting docking, we are now docking in earnest in uh, half an hour or something and then you can join us to, to have a look. But if he is docking, uh, if I see something that that is, uh, if, if I can give him tips and, 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 uh, and hints for the docking, he gets this all the way, you know. I say, mm -hmm. okay, now you have to come a little bit to starboard, a little bit to port, and you have to use the thrusters, so and so, 
and, and these things. So we have a communications during the whole... The, oh, the, the whole maneuver. Yeah. Okay. And of course, if it gets <laughs> really bad, I take over, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we do a debrief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what was good and what was wrong, but, but uh, of course, as, as they get more experience, you know, you the, the, and of course, the most important thing as a bridge resource management. So when the uh, people come new on board here, we always tell them as, okay, I'm the captain, chief officer, you know, when I'm off shift, I have a chief officer is going, he is docking and sailing and doing all these things because we are going 24 seven. Okay, you are my first officer. Mm -hmm. We are docking. You see the stern coming in there very fast, you know, and you think, shit, is this, is this right? Should I say anything? And then it's the first thing I say, if you see something that you don't seem to be normal, you have to tell me. You yeah. have to give me a heads up. Yeah. 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 Because 99% I have control, but the 1% I'm interested to, to catch. Yeah. So we have a, a, the, a, a very, very low limit. So you can say to me, you're never, uh, you're coming fast. Uh, so we, we talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. So he can also uh, catch me up. Yeah, and that is important in good communication. That is uh, a bridge resource management in, 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 uh, in practice. But it's but also similar to what I do. We have the so-called crew resource management, um, good communication, for example, um, closed loop communication. So when I say something, I want to have an answer from him yeah. that he has heard me. Yeah. Or like you do, like um, the talking procedure, this talking, yes, I see we are a little bit fast, we're a little bit close, I will correct click like this. So you know in the loop um, that I would be aware of any situation and I would take action yeah. like this. And, and after a flight, we always do in the crew a debriefing um, what we did good on this flight and what we would like to improve, where we made some errors or mistakes. Mm. It's just normal we do this kind of debriefing. Yeah. We don't do a debrief uh, after, but um, uh, of course it's uh, it's one thing to get alongside in like this, you know, clear day, no wind, and you get in with uh, 20 meters per second. Mm -hmm. These things, uh, a lot of variation, you know, yeah. and, and, and also for the information you have, if you have weather like this, we take a short brief, you know. If you have really bad weather, we have a, a longer brief. So it depends on the circumstances uh, yeah. around us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's similar so, to us as well. We have a, a briefing before every approach, yeah. every landing. We do a crew briefing, yeah. so we go through the most important points. Mm. So we have a, we call it a shared mental model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know this term? Yeah, uh, I guess it's a, it's similar to our rich resource mm -hmm. management. Yeah, yeah I guess it's, so. it's all about communications yeah. and, and, and knowledge about what yeah. should we do. And yeah. Because if I don't tell the Rune uh, what I'm intended to do when I'm docking, he is not. Uh, he, he cannot come give me input yeah. if something is, is, is not according to my plan. Yeah. So that's important too. Yeah, yeah this is the crew coordination. Yeah. I also yeah. feel is really, really important. Yeah, yeah so I do, I, if the weather is really bad, I mean foggy, I can do an automatic landing. Mm. Can you do an automatic no. docking? No, no, no. No? All manual. Oh, all yeah. manual? All manual. Yeah. Even in the thick fog conditions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All okay. manual. Yeah. I mean, when it is stormy weather, we also have to do the manual landings, yeah. even if people think everything yeah. is automatic in a cockpit, it's no, not. No, we don't have any. We don't have any automatic docking for system. You know, so, uh, some of these uh, offshore ships and this working vessel, they have this DP dynamic position system, mm -hmm. but we don't have it, and actually we don't want it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, be because uh, we have a very, uh, uh, very tight schedule. Where we have in 11 days, we have 64 ports, so it's uh, wow. it's, uh, it's going uh, three or four uh, arrival departure for each watch we are going. No, but we do we do everything manually. We do uh, the narrow parts as well, steer manually. Yeah. And, and where do I learn this as a young second officer? When I come from school, I yeah. am what? I'm a yeah. navigation officer? Yeah, the navigation officer. Okay, and then I progress to a second officer? Yeah. And yeah. then to the first officer? Yeah. And, and the eventually to the captain. Yeah. Where do I learn to to steer this ship? Yeah. Is it in a simulator? No, no, no. You learn it uh, with your chief officer just behind you, telling you what to do and make sure that if, if something is not correct, he will take over. Uh, yeah. He so needs to be very careful because in the mass is, I mean, it's an immense yeah, 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 mass. Yeah, yeah. But we start in open waters, you know. Okay. Yeah. And then we are uh, processing, and then we are getting further as, as, as the skills are improving. Yeah. So we start very light. When you come here, start maneuvering, for example, we always start with that you will uh, uh, leave the dock. You never start with, with uh, getting to the dock, you will leave. 
So then I have uh, my uh, first officer or chief officer has, has his first officer and he will stand together with him on the bridge wing, telling mm -hmm. him what to do, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and be very close to him, to watch him and start to get, get the feeling of the ship. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, if things are, are uh, not going the way you want, you just uh, take over, you know, and just take over the command. But we have, that's the only way to learn it. You have yeah. to do it. Uh, yeah. uh, we are always ready, so th they would not get the time to mess it up before, okay. we, before we take over, if it's you good. can say it like it's that. Good. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's uh, similar to my yeah. job as a captain, but in the last 50 feet before the runway, before we touch down, it's almost too late to, to do anything. Mm. Yeah. Um, when it is messed up, but then yes, again, as you say, we we need to be as early as possible with uh, yeah. um, taking action yeah. before. We are doing this a lot, you know, and, and yeah. the chief officer is a really, really skilled. Uh, all the chief officers, and of course, many of the first officers. But when you are new, we can only see if you have control or not, and if mm -hmm. we are in the slightest. Uh, um, if, if I'm uh, considering, do he has control or not? I will take over. Okay. And then we try the next port. Yeah. And start with the open, yeah. easy ports first, yeah. and, and and then we get further on as as they get skills. And this is also what doing this job so really really interesting. And I have to say, I, I'm just amazed though with the young people that comes on board, how quick they uh, they take it. So it's uh, and of course here we have AC pods. You know, we can turn the propeller 360 degrees. Yeah. We have uh, two bow thrusters. So the ship is very maneuverable as well. When I see you docking maneuvers in, in these narrow ports, mm. yeah, high respect for what, what you do. Yeah, thank you. In 11 days, you know, we uh, have 64 ports and um, we have a rotation of 22 days, you know, so we have 128 in the working period. So the chief officer has half of them and I had the other half. So, mm -hmm. and I split them with the first officer and okay. he splits it with the with the first officer, okay. that is. Yeah. But That's course, similar to my job. In good weather, we, we, we can do this. But of course, as the, as the challenge increases, mm -hmm. but the weather is bad, you know. I do all the arrivals myself, and all does the chief officer if it's really bad weather, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is interesting, uh, when I have um, an abnormal, abnormal or an emergency situation, I try to let pilot the plane by my first officer. So yeah. I have the time and the capability yeah. to think, and yeah. to, to, to lead yeah. the situation. Yeah. Uh, that is really important, uh, I believe, because uh, as a captain, I should get a little bit uh, away from the situation, yeah, to try to make the full control. I will not get to steer the ship, then I will set one of the navigators to steer it. Then we have, a, of course, if we have an emergency, we have a team up here on the mm -hmm. bridge. We have some for the communication, and some for log writing, some for sailing, some for communications. So all this here on the muster list has, so mm -hmm. everyone has the task in, mm -hmm. the, in the situation. And of course, uh, my job then is to be uh, to have the, the complete overview to get the to get the right uh, mm -hmm. decisions. Yeah, the overview yeah. is uh, yeah. the captain's job, I yeah. guess. And is then you must, sometimes you have to try to get a little bit back and, and yeah. see the whole the whole situation. Yeah, I have maybe two more or three more questions yeah. uh, to to get to um, to a nice ending of our interview. Yeah. I mean, one of the most uh, famous questions I'm being asked as a captain of a, of an airplane is did you already have an emergency? Mm. And of course I had some kind of emergencies, but I never had to, to do an emergency landing with no engines, like uh, no. Captain Sullenberger, for example. Yes, I had issues with the engine, I had issue, issues with the steering uh, and passenger issues. What, what would be your most challenging situation to describe in all these years? Yeah, of course, if you lose power, uh, you lose your propellers, for example, that is, of course, uh, really uh, demanding situations. That is not very likely, you yeah. know, we have two separate engine rooms, we have two separate propellers, and also have our anchor ready, so... But of course, uh, I think what we fear most on this ship is a, is a fire. Mm. Yeah, that That's is, the that same is, on the plane, yeah, fire and smoke yeah. is, I guess, the worst thing. Worst things. scenario, yeah. Because then we have a limited time yeah. to react. Yes. So, and also, if you have a, a bad weather situation, it's, are you able to evacuate? Mm -hmm. you know? So there's a lot of questions around this. So many variations of what can happen. You know, you do. Yeah. So you have to be prepared for everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, we, we, are, we are training for this. We, have, uh, we train every week, you know, mm -hmm. fire departments train mm -hmm. every week. We have a full-scale uh, evacuation drill every 11th day. And training with evacuation groups. And we do a lot of training. 
really a lot of training. So, uh, so uh, that is the highest important for us yeah. to be to be ready to, to take care yeah. of the situation. And you can do it um, within your work. We do it twice a year in the simulator, of course. So, what is the question maybe that you would like to answer, but nobody asks you? But you always <laughs> waited for so long that somebody would ask you about this. Uh, no, I cannot think any uh, particular question, <laughs> okay. to be honest with you. <laughs> that's good, that's good. <laughs> Maybe when you leave I could come to something. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure then uh, afterwards yeah. uh, we will have uh, an idea yeah. about the, court, the, the famous no, best I, question. No, I, I, I don't have any, but, uh, but we get a lot of questions, a lot of interesting questions. And, and, okay. uh, and, uh, and, um, that is also a good part of the job because uh, sometimes the people ask me things I really have to check up, you know. Mm -hmm. Then I get some knowledge as well mm -hmm. in t out of it at the, at the end. So. so what else should I ask you? Is there something I should ask you uh, or something you would not want to tell me? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> 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 no, no, I, I can ask me everything, but uh, no, I, uh, as I say, we are, uh, we are, uh, and organizations that have to work in, in every uh, yeah in every part of the step of the of the hierarchy and, and all these things so so we need to have a, a, a smooth machinery all the way it's going so um, and of course it can be uh, sometimes really demanding mm -hmm. but most of the time it's a real pleasure to be a captain mm -hmm. you sailing in this beautiful weather mm -hmm. good crew and yeah. and uh, yeah as as you I guess I love my job that is plain and simple. Yeah, yeah, I love my job really, and uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I love these sunny days where yeah. the captain's life is easy, yeah. or these terrible days where something technically goes wrong, yeah. passengers go wrong, we, and we have to show our capabilities, because these days are demanding and in a way they are interesting yeah. as well, yeah. but I better wish the sunny days usually. Yeah, no, of course, but this is also a part in, in this route, in this route. we have uh, really challenging days, we have really easy days, and we have, you know, the weather on the coast of Norway shifts a lot, mm -hmm. especially in the winter time. So you can have, uh, round, you can have trips that you have uh, bad weather from start to stop, and of course that this is quite a demanding trip. But as a, with a good trained crew, it works out uh, good, yeah. 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 So of course, sometimes we have to cancel ports if the weather is bad. We have to cancel open sea stretch because the weather is too bad. It, it happens. The ship can handle it, but we don't want to expose our, our passengers for mm -hmm. this uh, distance. That's yeah. a good point. Uh, that my aircraft can handle and take a lot, yeah. but the passengers don't like yeah. it. No. So, yeah. I guess we come to an end. Uh, in, for me, Bjorn, it was really an interesting time it with you talking me. about it. I could go on for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess, um, yeah. But maybe, maybe the final words um, you can give our viewers. Why should they be on a Havila Kisrutten voyage like we are today? What is the most famous thing or the, the nicest thing to experience? Yeah. Uh, I guess the first of all, I would say that uh, the environments of this ship is, we are, I guess, the most environment ship running in this size. Mm -hmm. We have uh, using LNG as, and we have batteries, uh, so we have lowered uh, the, the CO2 and NOx uh, dramatically. So we are really environment. We, we, we have spent a lot of money to get as most environment as possible. And we have made it as well. Yeah. It's a new ship, it's very good facilities. It's, uh, nice cabins, and the food is amazing. I have to tell everyone that you have experienced it. And of course, the route from Bergen to Kirkenes is amazing as well, yeah. Kirkenes-Bergen. Yeah. So this is a brand new ship with the best facilities you have. Then the environment aspect has been really, really put on the schedule. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a fantastic crew. It is indeed. And for me, it's also a, it's a second voyage, but I guess not my last one. No, I hope so. <laughs> and uh, in summertime, I love this midnight sun situation. Yeah. It just never dark. Yeah. And in the wintertime, it was the northern Beauty lights, night. the aurora yeah. borealis. Yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. The variation of the coast of Norway is just amazing. It is. Yeah. Really. So you have uh, yeah, northern lights, midnight sun, bad weather, good weather, and, and all this has this charm. Yeah. It's, yeah, I believe. It's yeah. changing a lot. Yeah, it is. Thank you very much, yes, Bjorn, for your valuable you for, time. Uh, joining us. It was a real pleasure. So. It's cool. Yeah. Thank so you. Now we are making ready for the harbor of Ernest, so mm -hmm. then we have to go and do some talking. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're blowing the whistle. <laughs> <laughs>